Hi, my name is John Helton. I'm an Education Solutions Specialist with Autodesk. And today I wanted to go over a question that I get fairly frequently from FIRST Robotics competition teams, uh, Baja and Formula teams at the university level, because all three are building frames that are custom to their needs. Uh, and, it, and the question comes up often. And that question is, how do I create a custom profile for the frame generator? So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through that entire process here in this demonstration. And I'll show a few different things. I'll show how to create a part or sketch and a part. I'll show how to create an eye part because that's uh, useful, very useful in creating custom components. Uh, I'll show how to publish that to a custom library and how to leverage that component to build a frame. So to get started, uh, let's look at the project file. So the project file is important because that's where your libraries are configured. Uh, I have my ME training option here and this is one that I just uh, I use by default uh, to, as a catch-all kind of. So what we're going to do is down in the bottom right hand corner um, there's a, a button that says configure content center libraries and I'm going to go ahead and click on that and that brings up a dialog box that shows all of the libraries that are currently installed. Uh, so it's Inventor ANSI, ISO, DIN, these are all the component libraries for standard components so nuts, bolts, washers, structural shapes, things like that. They're all read-only. You can't modify standard components because they're standard components. So in order to make a modification to one or create your own, you would need to create your own read-write library. Now by default, I think Inventor creates this My Library. I may have created it on my own. I can't remember, to be honest. But um, My Library is a read-write library. You could check it and use it. It's already enabled for this project already. But what I need to do is I'm going to actually create a new library called First Robotics. So I'm going to use this button down here uh, to create a new library. I'm going to call it First Robotics. And this is going to be my library that I collect all components that are specific to the First Robotics competition. Uh, so now you can see it. It's checked for in use. The name is First Robotics and it's read-write. So that's all you have to do to configure a library for use. I'm going to hit done and then I'm going to hit save uh, to save my changes to my project. Now I'm going to go through this from scratch. I'm going to create a new part. It's just a standard default part and I'm going to walk through the entire process of creating this part, turning it into an I part and publishing it and all that. I'm not going to get into too many details on how to sketch and part model. Uh, I already have videos on those on YouTube. However, I've received enough uh, feedback from my YouTube channel with people saying that they need more help in learning the basics. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through the process. So I'm going to start out, uh, all the dimensions I'm going to be using are dimensions I've already measured and know, uh, just to speed the process a bit. So when I'm creating my default parts and basic parts, I always uh, pretty much just draw the basic shape and then go back and add dimensions and constraints to control its size and shape completely. Um, oops, I didn't add that dimension. 1.41. Okay, so as you can see, I've got some lines that are blue, some that are green. And what that means is the ones that are blue are, are fully constrained, the ones that are green are not, uh, or they have degrees of freedom. If you want to see what those degrees of freedom are, you can right click on the graphics window and select show all degrees of freedom. And what this does is brings up some red arrows that show um, how, how things can move in the sketch and those will get removed as you add dimensions. So this point for example, has arrow in all directions, which means I can move it in all directions. But let's do, and this one here in the center, I can move up and down, right, by clicking on it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing the degrees of freedom by adding constraints and adding uh, dimensions. So first, I notice this top line is green, but I don't want that to be able to move up and down unless this does. But it's driven by this dimension already. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a collinear constraint, which means put this one exactly in line with this line. And now you see all those red arrows just drop because they can't move up and down anymore because it's, it has to be perfectly in line with that line across from it. And that line is controlled by this height. So you get the basic idea. 
Um, so let's do a couple of more, a couple more things. I'm going to create some construction geometry. But before I do that, let me clean up, move this dimension out of the way a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to create a, a, a some construction geometry. Um, I'm going to hover over and snap to the midpoint of this line, and I'm going to draw straight up. It becomes perpendicular with one of the the horizontal lines already, and I'm going to place that. Now I'm going to use this as a center line. Um, a lot of people ask how you change things to a center line. I rarely do because Inventor doesn't necessarily need it in every case. Um, so I don't want to bother with clicking the line and going up here to the format section and hitting center line. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. I, I'm just going to leave it open. Because this isn't closed or bumping into this line, like ending on this line, terminating on this line, it doesn't create a closed profile, so Inventor ignores it. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Uh, but the reason I created that line is to create symmetry. I'm going to make this line here and this line here symmetric around this line. Now what that means is if I move this arrow or this point, those other lines move exactly as they do on the opposite side of that line. So they're completely symmetric. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a dimension here. I know this is uh, 0.175. And I know this dimension for this angle is uh, 9.5. Um, so next we have, uh, let me put on some fillets here. I know that's 125 and that's 125. Um, I know the bottom ones are 0.273. There and there. And then I know that this dimension here is 1.01 or 0.101. All right, so by doing that, you can see the size and shape are all correct. And you also see that everything turned blue. That means it's fully constrained uh, and things are all set up the way they need to be. So next, essentially what I have here is a U channel or a C channel, depending on the, the, the orientation. Um, but what I this is a standard shape. This is the one that is in the system already. So what I want to do is modify this. And I can do that by adding extra profiles. So I'm going to draw from the end point of this line. I'm just going to draw out this way and then I'm going to draw up and connect to this arc. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension that. I want this end point or that vertex there to always be a quarter inch away from this line. Um, so no matter what the width is, it's always going to be a quarter inch from that edge, right? And then I want this to be 45 degrees. Okay. So next, I want to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to draw from the end point of the line out some distance, and I'm going to draw up and connect to that arc. All right. And then I'm going to dimension the vertex to the edge wall. And here, instead of typing in 0.25, I already know that this is the dimension I want. So I'm going to just select it. And what it does is it takes this variable name, which is D7, and it puts it in here so that it makes it 25. So if this were to change to uh, 0.27, they both change to 0.27, right? So that's, that's just linking dimensions quickly in the sketch. And you can do a bunch of stuff. You can create equations and things like that from it as well. The other thing that is useful from time to time is driven dimensions. These dimensions or these uh, lines are already fully constrained. So when I put this dimension on, it's going to say, do you want to add this as a driven dimension? And I'm going to accept that. And it puts it in parentheses. And all that means is this is for reference. It just lets me see that this is 45 so that if I change this one, this one updates and whatnot. So now we have the sketch all laid out. I've got my profiles all set up, so I'm ready to go. Next, I want to create a couple parameters uh, that can be used to uh, control the size and shape when we create the eye part, and it also help when we do the frame generator uh, components. So what I'm going to do is go to the Manage tab up here, and there's a Parameters button. And I'm going to create some user parameters. Down here at the bottom, I select User Parameters, hit Add Link, and I'm going to create Length. I'm going to leave that at 1. I'm going to add a new one, and I'm going to call it width. And I know I want the width to be 3. I'm going to add another one called height. And I know I want that to be 1.41. And these are all dimensions that are in the system. So here's that 3, and here's that 1.41. So if I scroll up this list, 
you can see here's 3, here's 1.41, and instead of using these values for those dimensions, I'm going to change these up here to use those variables we just, or parameters we just created. So on the 3, that's the width. And you'll notice as I, I'm going to back up, it's red until I get to a point where the name matches a variable in the system. So you know that you've gotten to a point where things are correct when it, it, it goes black instead of saying red. And this 1.41 is H, it's the height. There we go. And we haven't used length yet, we're going to use that in a minute. So I'm going to hit done here. And what that did is, you notice on the screen now, this 3 has an FX in front of it, just like the 0.25 does. What the FX means is that uh, this is being driven by some other variable, or whether it's another dimension or a parameter, and I can see what that is by double-clicking. I could have just as easily come in or created those parameters and then come back over here, just gone in here and typed height. It works just the same way. It's bidirectional. So you can do it in the parameters table or you can do it on the screen. It's up to you. So now we're ready to extrude this into a part. Um, a shortcut I use, I'm in the sketch currently, but I know I'm done and I know my next command is going to be extrude. Rather than hit Finish Sketch, go to the Model tab and hit Extrude. You can just hit E on your keyboard, and it does both things at once. So it will finish this sketch, and it puts me in the Extrude command. Now, by default, it selects Profile um, as my option. It wants me to pick a profile. And there's three profiles here. There's the two notches and this overall outer notch or outer shape. Um, so if there was only one, had we not created these notches here, uh, it would automatically select this whole thing because there's only one profile, and then it would um, move on to other options. But in this case, I'm going to select this outer op outer shape, and I'm going to set its length. Instead of one inch here in the heads-up display, I'm going to create it to uh, set it to length. Okay? So when I hit that, I hit OK, and we've got our custom shape. And we've got parameters set up so that we can create things. Um, and be, you know, so we're almost ready to publish. Before we do that, there's a couple of things, uh, small things we need to do. Um, I'm going to right-click on this part at the top of the browser and go to Eye Properties. And in Eye Properties, I'm going to select select Physical. And you don't have to do this, but I like to do it. And I'm going to I'm going to just set the uh, default material in Aluminum 6061, which is the type of material this is. It's up to you. You can change it when you create the profile or when you create the frame generator. Uh, components, but I, I'm going to do it here just to, to have it set up. Next, we're going to create the eye part. So from the Manage tab, under Author, the Author section of the Manage tab, there's the option to create eye part. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And what it comes up with is a list of all the parameters that we have set up that are in use. Um, it's got the first part listed. And it's got a length of 1, width of 3, and a height of 1.41, which is all the dimensions that we already had. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on this, and I'm going to say Insert Row, and I'm going to say Insert Row a second time, because I want three different parts. And you can have as many as you want, and you can do a lot of cool things with eye parts. You can do, you can suppress features, you can set up eye mates, you can add, just select which work planes or work features are included in the eye part. Uh, this isn't an eye part demo. So I'm not going to really go over that, but just to know that it's available. So next what we need to do is, you know, we don't want three parts that are identical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the width on these. So I'm going to make one three, one 2.75, and I'm going to make the bottom one here 2.5. And I'm going to hit OK. So now what you'll see is in the top of the browser, we've got a table here. And it lists part one, two, and three. And as I double click on each, it just changes the parameters of that eye part so that it changes the size and shape. Um, very common, very cool. Um, but now we're ready to publish this and get different size components in our frame generator. So let me go ahead and save this part. I'm not going to save it as first robotics. Uh, here, I'm going to just overwrite one of my existing ones. I'm going to call it First Robotics Custom Channel. I'm going to hit Yes to save it. And now I'm ready to publish this. So on, on the Manage tab again, same place where iPart or Create iPart is, there's an auth in the Authors section. There's a drop down here for 
uh, authoring components. And it, it, by default, you'll see component listed there. Um, I've already been playing around with things, so I've moved, you know, selected different options. But you can create components, tubes and pipes, connectors, and structural shapes. In this case, what we're doing is a structural shape. So I'll go ahead and cl click on that, and it brings up the structural shape authoring dialog. Now, in this dialog, there's not a whole lot that has to be set up. What we need to do is uh, select the category. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a channel. You, you, know, you might create angles or I-beams, uh, but in this case, I'm creating a channel. And it does most of the work for you. Um, I only have one extrusion, and that's kind of what I recommended uh, in the beginning because of this. You, know, you don't want this to be complex. I try to do it all in one sketch if I can. But what it does is it sets up your base extrusion. Since there was only one, it automatically selected the one. You can see the checkbox. And then the default insert point, uh, it predefined one right in the center of the part. And that's fine for this you know, setup. Um, so what I'm going to do is now go to the parameter mapping section, or the tab up top. And this is a big long list of what could potentially look scary, like a bunch of scary variables. But uh, you don't have to fill all these in if you don't want. It's up to you. I'm not going to go into what each does, but um, it's up to you as to which you use. The one that's important is the base length. And I'm going to set that to the length variable that we set up. And that's the only one that's required when you're publishing something to the, to the content center. So now we've got everything set up. I'm going to go ahead and hit publish now. And what this is going to do is it's going to make some changes to this part. So it says this part has been modified for use of structure, use um, of structural shape authoring, and you can get details on it. But what it essentially did is over in the browser, it named that base component body, and it created a driven length uh, sketch that it uses internally. So I'm going to hit OK here and let it do its thing. And it's going to bring up my publish guide. Um, by default, when we were setting things up, I already had my library selected for use in this project. And the other one uh, uh, it has is the first robotics library we created. So essentially what this drop down is showing you is all the read-write libraries that you have available in this project. So I'm going to select first robotics. I'm going to leave the language English. It's already set up to be a channel, so I'm going to leave that. It already is set up for base length, and I have an opportunity to change all of these other variables if I choose to. I'm going to hit next. And then they have defined key columns. So in this case, um, you have to move one, but this is another reason I use uh, specific variables. I'm going to move the length, width, and height over, just because those are the three key things that I had in the system, or you know, had set up. Then I'm going to hit next, and here I get to name some of my components. So I'm going to start out by saying my family name folder is first robotics, because that's where I'm, that's the main area of this family. Um, and then the family name is first robotics custom channel. And I'm going to say uh, custom um, 45 slot. Yeah, that's good enough. Custom 45 slot. Um, just some basic family description. Uh, next, I'm going to use ANSI as my standard. And I'm going to use, in both cases, the standards organization and standard. Uh, because this is really just a standard component that you're buying and modifying. So you'd probably want to match it up with whatever standard component you're tweaking. Um, unless, you know, you're building your own from scratch. But uh, chances are most people are buying some standard component and making a modification to it. So now I'm going to hit next. And it takes the picture that it saw, just a planar view of the part, and that's fine for me. You can change it if you want, but um, in this case, I don't think it's necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this. It tells me that my publish was completed successfully, and I hit OK. And now I'm just going to close this part and save it, because we're done with that portion of the demo, that portion of the demonstration. So next, what we want to do is we're going to create a, a standard assembly. This is nothing special. It's just a standard assembly in Inventor. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to make some changes real quick to set my orientation. You can see this XYZ coordinate system here. I like my X being in this direction, but I like my Y on the flat plane at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just move my view cube around a little bit so that I get into the orientation I like, with X and Y being the bottom table, of, uh, you know, essentially the tabletop, and then Z in the up direction. Uh, and then I'm going to set my current view, home view, 
and I'm going to set my this bottom view to really be represent the front. And what that does is it snaps everything into place so that if I rotate this part around, you know, somewhere crazy and I hit home, it just puts me back in my home orientation. Uh, next, I'm going to create a part. I'm going to call this frame box and hit OK. And this is going to, oh, I already have one that exists. I'm just going to overwrite it. Uh, what I'm doing here is just creating a box that I can use, uh, you know, to create some edges that I can use for the frame generator in a, in a second here. So I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to hit it 24 inches. I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard to switch to the next dimension, 24 inches. Hit tab again. And then uh, left click to place the rectangle. Hit my home view. Now I'm going to hit E on my keyboard. I'm going to extrude. I'm going to hit that 24 inches. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard, enter on my keyboard, and I have a box. So the reason I created the box is just so I could get these edges to drive the frame. And I'll show you what I'm doing in a second here. I, next, we're going to go ahead and start creating components or, or creating a frame with our custom components. So I'm going to go to the design tab and then I'm going to look at uh, inserting a frame. And it tells me I need to save the assembly first and that's fine. So we're going to create this. We're going to call it custom, uh, here, custom frame demo. I'm going to overwrite the one I already have. I'm going to hit OK. And now my assembly is saved, and it takes me into the frame insertion dialog box. And what it defaults to is it just defaults to a rectangular bar. You can see the shape here. Um, so I've got my ANSI standard selected, but if I click this drop down and I scroll down this list, I now have first robotics custom channel, custom 45 slot. And that is the one we just created. Now, let me, let me look at the C channel real quick before we jump to that just to show you. So I'm going to do the anti C channel. Here's that essentially that same shape we started with. So that's, I, I cr essentially created a frame with this shape. And then I took measurements off of that when it was in the assembly to get my dimensions uh, for, the, for this component. And then I'm going to, so let's go back. I'm going to go first robotics. Here's my four, custom 45 slot. And now you can see the picture that was there, you know, with our little fancy little slots created here. Uh, and when I click the drop down, it gives me some good information. It gives me some of the values that were the length and the height that were moved over when we published, remember? So we had 3 by 1.41 height, we had a 2.75 by 1.41, and 2.5. So now I can select from any of these, and the system will automatically adjust the size based on that eye part. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 3, that's fine. You'll also notice it defaulted to aluminum 6061. And that is because we set up the I property to say that that was the material. I can always go in here and modify that for this specific frame, but it defaults to it. So like I said, it's not a huge amount of work. It doesn't save a huge amount of time, but it makes sure that if you know that this component is aluminum and you're going to be buying it, that it gives a better shot that you're going to come up with the right material here. Um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating this frame. So I'm going to start by selecting these top lines on this box. And what that did was it gave me a preview of what this is going to look like. So you can see here's my U channel. Uh, it's got the 45 degree slots. The prongs are facing down. And the frame is running right down the center point. That default center point is right here in this dialog box. You can see that it's selected. And it's running right there. So it's sitting above the box and it's hanging over the edges. And what you can do now is with this preview, you can go through and adjust how you want this thing oriented. So let's say, for example, um, I want, rather than, say I want the, the, this skeleton, this box, uh, frame box, say that's the outermost dimensions of my frame. I don't want anything hanging outside of that box. I can use these orientation options to cycle through different positions. So if I click here, it's using this corner, the very bottom corner of this prong, which you can see whoops, is right there. It's using that as the position to position this, or the location to position this. So you can just cycle through. Now I've got everything below the box, but it's on the outside. And this one would move everything so that it's below the box and inside. So you can use these orientation options to just cycle through positions. 
Um, so this is good. This is what I wanted. I wanted to be able to have the prongs facing down, all the flat parts facing up on this one. Um, you could also rotate or offset if you needed to, but in this case it just worked out that this is the way I want it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and apply those. And it's going to ask me to give frame names. Um, I just use the defaults because uh, it's pretty straightforward. And I hit OK and it's going to create those four components. Now, um, it's a little hard to see because they're inside the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my uh, shaded mode to width edges. And you can see that those components are there. We can also make this uh, part see-through, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it for now because uh, it, it, it works. So now next with this still enabled, let's go ahead and add a, a few more. So we'll just add and we'll select these bottom corners. And I'm selecting through the part. You know, and Okay, so now here we have the same setup we had up the top, but you can see the prongs are facing down. They're below the box and on the outside of the box. So let's fix this so that the prongs are facing up. Let's do 180 degrees. Uh, and ironically, that works perfect. That If I rotate those around, it's, it rotates it so the flat part of this frame is pointing down. The prongs are facing up, and that's what I wanted in this situation. If I didn't, I, again, I could cycle through my orientation options and, and get back to where I wanted. So these are all inside and, and, and facing up. The prongs are facing up, so I'm going to apply those. And then you could you know, continue along that path doing the same sort of thing. We could select all these edges and create the vertical components. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just cancel out here. And I'm going to turn the visibility of this component off. Oops. Let's turn the visibility of that box off. So now you can see the frame components. You know, and I can always go back and add the vertical frames. But I wanted to, just wanted you to be able to see this stuff. Um, and you can then use the frame generator tools to trim some of these things up. So for example, I could do um, uh, trim and extend. I can select the frame member I want to cut. And then I can select the face I want it to cut to. And I hit apply and it's going to trim that. And then I can do uh, the frame member I want to cut and the face I want to cut it to. And I can apply. You know, or, you know, you could do things like mitering or, a, you know, there's a few different options for end treatments, but I'm not going to go into that because this isn't really a frame generator demo uh, completely. But essentially, you can then go and just use these tools here. I can change components out. I can miter. I can notch and trim, shorten, extend, all that stuff. Um, but anyway, that allows me, as you can see, I'm, I, I've gone through the process of creating a part, turning it into an I part, creating some parameters. I publish it to a custom library. Uh, and use that new custom component to create a pretty cool frame. So I hope this was useful for everyone. I look forward to presenting to you again in the future. Thanks.